Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashlips and welcome back to part 4 of this beautiful tutorial series where we are going to be finalizing building this gallery dap. Now this is the final product and as you can see from our progress, we are almost there. Like I said, this is the final part of this tutorial series, so if you want to follow along, I highly recommend watching the full playlist. That being said, let's go and see what we're going to implement next. I want to finalize this top part providing the OpenSea link as well as the counter part. So let's go and do that in our code. Back here in the code in the app.js file, I'm going to start off by creating a div container for us. Now the reason why this is important is because we want these to fall in a row. So I'm going to do that and this div container will have a styles property where I'm going to target the position. And the position we're going to make relative. In this div what we're going to need is an image. So I'm basically going to copy this and paste it in here. For this image link, I'm going to replace it with the OpenSea logo. And instead of targeting the NFT image class for styling, I'm going to make this the card image style. Now that I have this, I am actually going to go back to our styles. And let's go and create this style. For the width, we're going to go with a smaller width of 30 pixels and for the height we're going to do 30 pixels as well. I want there to be a margin around kind of the whole image but not on a certain part so it's going to be 0, 5 pixels, 5 pixels and 5 pixels. Save that, let's go check it out. There's our OpenSea image. It's not clickable yet because it's not a link. In order to turn the image into a link, we will wrap it in an A tag. So this is just the A tag that turns this into a link. And what we need in here is a target. So the target we're going to make underscore blank. This just means that it will open in a new page. And then we need an href. So the href we most probably going to make dynamic as well because we need to read this from the data link over here. So basically the URL will look like this. OpenC collection and then our link, our dynamic link, right? And if we save this now and go back, we will be able to click on any of these and go to that um, actual page. So let's just test it out. Indeed, it goes here. Perfect. So now let's go back, let's add this little hand next to it. Regarding the icon, that should be easy. We've used it up here before. I'm going to copy this, then bring it down and paste it right below. I am going to get rid of the styles for now. We will put that back, but I am going to attach this class. Save this, let's go back and there we get this little icon. Let's quickly take a look at the final result. Over here you can see that if I don't own the NFT, then the image is kind of faded, as well as this icon. So this is the segment that I'm going to implement now. For this icon, like I said, we are going to put the style back, but this time we are going to focus on the opacity. And technically all we're going to say is if the NFT dot owner right if this is true we want this to be at full percentage else we're going to make it 0.2 remember that in the data over here we do have this owner field and we will be updating this live that's why we're doing a check here we're going to do the exact same on the image here as well Great, so as you can see, we've got the icon and the image a bit more opaque. This indicates that we do not own this NFT. Well, we don't know that yet because we need to still implement that feature. But let's go ahead and add the counter 
over here first. The counter that I'm referring to is this counter if we look at the final example. So we need to add that in here. If we go back to the code, we can then add a P tag right below our icon. In this P tag, we're going to refer to the NFT.count because we have that variable in the data. As a class, let's give it a counter class and let's style this counter. For the counter class, let's go to app.css, let's define our class and the position. So the position we're going to make absolute because we want to position it to the far right corner. For the positioning, we're going to specify that from the top, we need it to be 15 pixels. And from the right hand side, we're actually going to put it minus eight pixels. And then the font size is going to be 12. If we save this and go back, we can see our counter over there, which is currently zero. Our app is looking fantastic so far. So the only thing that's needed is to hook this all up, to loop through our data part, and then go and get the balance. So let's go ahead and do that. Back in the app.js file, let's create a new function right below balance. Let's create a new function, and we're gonna call this function check uh, collection. The check collection function, the purpose is to loop over the data set that we have over here. So we're going to run a for each over this array. So the data and here we can call it the NFT, so to speak. Let's not forget that this is actually data.list. And then for now, let's console.log this out. And we're just going to log out the NFT so we can see this working. Then let's go ahead and down here, create another user effect. We would like this function to run every time that the account changes. So we're going to add account as a dependency and call the check collection function. Save this, go back, let's inspect our page. And here we can see all the objects. Let's go back and let's go adapt our balance function. Here at the top, what I would like to do is take in the token address and we're going to use this address because it's dynamic, right? So we need to pass that in and also the current NFT because we're going to swap out this for the token address. So here, let's do that for our account. We can simply use our account variable over here and this will get the current balance. So what we're going to do now is create a temp NFTs variable. This is going to be equal to a copy of the NFTs dot list over here, uh, the state variable. And we want a copy because we are going to identify an NFT, manipulate it and then put it back into the list. We have the temp NFTs list, but we now are going to have a temp NFT. This will identify one NFT from this list, and then we're going to manipulate it. But how do we identify which one we need to manipulate? Well, we do pass in the NFT over here, and we know that it does have an ID. So what we could technically do is take our temp NFTs and select an index, where the temp NFTs and this is where we're going to extract it. And we're going to say find by index. In here, we're going to say the object we want to find needs to be equal to the object.id where it's equal to the nft.id. Basically, this whole function over here extracts for us the exact NFT that we want to manipulate right now. So now we can manipulate it. We can say that our temp NFT, we want the owner to be checked. If someone owns this, we already have the balance. So we can say if the balance is greater than zero, then automatically someone does own this NFT. So this key should be turned true. We also have the count. So we can say the NFT.count is going to be equal to the temp balance dot to string. 
And now that we've manipulated this object, let's save the list again. So we can say set our NFTs to an object where we have a list field. And in here, we're going to simply set it to our temp NFTs, like so. As a final refactor for this function, we really don't need to pass in the token address as a parameter into this function. The reason is we can use the NFT address over here because we do have an address in each NFT. So I'm rather going to do that. Then I will call this balance function over here and pass in my NFT. And that is it. The application should now technically be working. So jumping back into the browser, disconnecting my wallet, refreshing the application, we can see that MetaMask now pops up. We can also manually connect. Once we do that, we should see the amount of NFTs that we own from this art list. We can also see how many we own and they do show up with opacity being bright if we do. We can go to the OpenSea links and our application, our dApp is complete. Before you go and brag to your friends that you are now a Web3 developer, what I just want to show you as well is that when it comes to React, if you want your application's header to actually say that this is the application, go and open the public folder, change the description over here, as well as the title. You don't want it to be called React App. Then you can also change these images as well as the fav icon to your icons. Once you have done that, then you can build your application. Before we build this beautiful app, I really want to say thank you so much for watching this with me. If you did enjoy this video content, this playlist, and you learned a lot of stuff, then feel free to subscribe, join the Hashtabs movement, comment below and like this video, and share it with your friends. All right. So for the build step, we're going to press command C to exit this execution of running it locally. Then all we need to do is say npm run build. And when we do that, we should see a new builds folder pop up over here. Wait for the execution to complete. And the contents of this build folder is what you're going to host on a server. And this can be hosted on a static server so that's all once again thank you so much for watching and if you have any comments and you want to see new content that you want me to make please let me know in the comments i do read them and take your suggestions so we can build the future together then if you got stuck at any point and you want to learn more or you just simply want to join the discord server go to hashtabs.online click on discord and join thousands of devs enjoying web3 development till next time have a beautiful day